So hello, Type 3 community. Welcome to another episode of the Type 3 podcast. I'm here at the Developer Days in Malmö, Sweden with Niels Adermann. Cheers. Hey there. Um, so in case you don't know, Niels has this brilliant new product that's uh, private packages. What is this about? Um, so I've worked on Composer for over six years at this point. Wow. Um, Jordi, my business partner as well as the co-creator of Composer, um, has been taking on a lot of the maintenance over the last years. And the amount of time that's gone into this open source project is kind of mind-blowing if you think about it added up over that long period of time. Um, so in trying to find a way to actually make this project sustainable in the long run, because we can't keep going like this forever, we're trying to find a viable business model to keep Composer going as the big important open source project that it has become for the PHP world. Yeah. And private packages is just this attempt. It's a product for businesses using Composer, working with PHP that makes their life easier, that gives them additional um, efficiency, that makes their Composer operations faster, that lets their developers work with Composer more easily, that gives them functionality that uh, a open source project doesn't need. So it's a fun it's functionality on top of what Composer provides for free for open source projects and will continue to do um, that we can sell to businesses. And in return, by them paying for this product, Product, they support us in continuing to provide this open source tool. Okay, so packages is the free to use for everyone stuff. What makes private packages private? All right, so you have uh, packages, like you said, on packages.org, yeah. um, which is public, accessible by the entire world. Anyone can come, submit a package, add it there. Um, the private packages on packages.com um, on the contrary, um, is a repository just for your organization, for your business, that integrates with GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, depending on what you end up using, um, and takes all of your private repositories, automatically turns them into composer packages if they have the required contents, and makes them available for use within your organization only. Um, so you get all the same authentication and access control permissions from those other developer tools that you're used to. The integration actually she makes this work without any kind of setup. Um, and you get to access through Composer your own internal packages in the same way that you used to with the open source version without making them available publicly on the internet. Okay, so this is for my internal development teams. I use it for the stuff that maybe isn't, say, worth publishing because it's very specific, no library kind of style. Right, exactly. It's my more, application, you know, basically, if you're building right? An, you're building a, let's say, a site, as you're an agency, you're building a website for one of your customers. Uh, and then sure, you're using all types of open source software while building this, but then you also have that application itself, for example, or that one package with some very specific code that really only makes sense for this one customer. That's not something you plan on sharing with other people because it's just not something that makes sense outside of their context. Most likely, I'm not even allowed to legally. Exactly. There may be different reasons for this. Sometimes it doesn't make it just doesn't make sense. Sometimes you're not allowed it for legal reason. Um, sometimes you just don't want to do so yet, right? I yeah. mean, you might be testing out something that you plan on publishing later, but you want to be able to work with. You it don't want to get composer. the shitstorm coming in with it. What? Because <laughs> yeah, I mean, right. you do publish something, you kind of have to own it. Like you know, you don't want to. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. You know, I I'm not a great fan of these code dumps of just here's a lot of code and then nobody maintains it anymore. Nobody gives support for it. Um, so you know, maybe just do those for a little while before you end up doing that. So I have to decide to go for either private packages or packages.org, or is there some magic involved? Um, so the way that this works is that because you always end up having both open source and private dependencies is that private packages, in addition to making your private code, as the name suggests, available, mirrors all the open source dependencies that you have. So automatically, if you run a composer update with your private packages as the source for packages, um, it'll go fetch the packages that you require from packages.org, um, add these to your private repository, and make them available just as you're used to. The upside is that on the private packages web interface, which again has similarities to what you know from packages, you can browse and search packages, um, it'll list all the open source dependencies that are actually used in your organization. 
application. Oh, that's so smart. It's not all of the PHP world, like phppackages.org, with like lots of packages that you don't use, but only the ones that are actually being used in projects within your organization. So that, for example, in a search, you can easily find the ones that other people are already using, um, and it's not just everywhere. And this has the side effect of, again, improving the performance of Composer operations, making you more efficient, because Composer no longer has to look at all of the PHP world, but it looks at only what's necessary used in your organization when it runs its typical operations. But that's like that's like having, say, I mean, how many packages are on packages.org right now? Like 500,000? I was looking this up earlier. It's 150,000 packages at yeah. this point using uh, over 900,000 versions altogether. Oh, yeah, right. That's, that's right. like so it's how nearly it scales, a million, right? Yeah, exactly. Because you have so and so many versions per package. Uh, so that's really a gigantic, impressive okay. amount that we've so, got so, so I can With yeah. private packages, I can reduce this so the lookup is faster because it only take a look at all the stuff I already downloaded or proxy. Uh, right, so uh, it'll keep a copy of the actual files that you're downloading. So this, the other effect is that the download itself is faster because um, wow. we do have packages.com in multiple locations um, and we do serve the actual zip files that are installed for a particular version. Smart. So unlike packages.org, which is purely a metadata uh, storage or like uh, service which provides the JSON that lists the different version numbers available um, and their metadata and then sends you off to actually download from wherever the open source maintainer placed their package so oftentimes github i think in nearly yeah. 97 98 percent of cases but sometimes some other location that they define themselves um, private packages will actually host the code that's, uh, for you so that you have guarantees about reliability um, that you're not relying on some open source maintainer storage, um, that you have a more local copy to download faster, which can really speed up these processes again, like a deployment process, the build process. So I figure that having all that stuff locally, this would have like a huge impact on a development team, right? Right, exactly. And uh, if you're working on a larger team, we do have private packages enterprise that you can actually install on your own hardware within your own network, which will increase the performance even further because it's not just our locations across the world, but rather uh, in your own network on your own hardware. So the performance becomes as if you're in, like, copying a file locally in your local network. So I would get like gigabit zip downloads, which would be blazingly right, fast. exactly. You can do that. That's neat. Um, how's the pricing? Um, so it's price per user is kind of common these days with a lot of developer tools. Um, the cloud version is available at a starting price of 49 euros a month and then you pay an extra that includes the first three users and then you pay an extra 14 euros per user per month um, the enterprise version is sold on an annual basis um, and the starting price with five users um, is 960 uh, euros uh, and then per month per year sorry oh nice so the cloud version is priced per month, so it's okay. for years. So it's an annual price of 960 well, that's euros. That's actually pretty reasonable. Yeah. So it's not that far off. Um, and then you add developers to this as well. There is, of course, uh, volume discounts available. So on packages.com, like the best the idea there is just to get in touch with us. We'll see how many developers you actually have working with Composer. So unlike, let's say, GitHub, the number of users here is not everyone in your organization, but really only people who work with Composer, right? Because that person on your support team who you also need a GitHub account for to create issues, issues and, and stuff, yeah, comment right. on things, they don't need access to private packages. So that too impacts the pricing because the number of developers depends on what exactly you're doing, whether your front end team actually needs to interact with us, then those types of questions. That's, that's actually pretty smart. Is there anything else that you would say is like the number one reason to use it? I mean, we have had, we've had speed, we've had reliability, we got privacy. Um, how, how can I, is there something more to it like license stuff or? Right, so there's a couple other features. Um, the first things that we have right now that are trying to make dependency management easier is a license review tool that in a larger organization especially can help you figure out whether any of your existing projects are using open source tools under a license that's incompatible with what you're selling or with the regulations that you have to follow within the organization. Um, there are a lot more tools that we're working on or that we plan to build this on. We are really seeing this as kind of the platform to build additional tools that help businesses manage their dependencies, their third-party code use better. Um, so things that we're working on right now are, for example, automatic pull requests sent to your repositories as soon as your dependencies are updated. 
So you'll automatically get a pull request with an updated composer log file, have your tests run against the new version whenever the library, the framework that you're using releases a new version. That's like amazing because in our company, we got quite often that we go like, okay, so it's three weeks, let's update dependencies again. Yep. And we might be off for a couple of versions. That's brilliant. Right, so I think we can make this process a lot simpler and thus make it easier for people to upgrade, to stay up to date. Um, and this should help with security. This should help uh, make this whole thing more manageable um, because as faster and easier this, this process gets, uh, the more often you'll actually be happy to do it. Absolutely. So this is amazing. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for building that. Thank you for being on the show. Yeah, glad to be um, here. All right, so there you have it. Check it out on packages.com. As usual, if you have any comments, put them down in the box below, and we'll see you next week. Bye.